Now, facial recognition systems being used in the development around King's Cross train station are to be investigated by the UK's data protection watchdog. The Information Commissioner, Elizabeth Denham, says the use of the technology should concern us all and that she was deeply worried about its growing use. While well, the King's Cross Central Development is home to both King's Cross and St Pancras International Stations, as well as plenty of restaurants, shops and cafes. Well, Argent, the uh, company behind the development has declined to say how long the facial recognition cameras have been in operation, what the legal basis is for their use, or in fact what systems it has in place to protect the data it collects. In 21st century society, a widely accepted yet dangerous rhetoric has emerged that if you have nothing to hide, you have nothing to fear. This has facilitated and advanced the act of compiling, politicising and monetizing data captured and disguised as surveillance. To investigate this condition, the project analyses a site of intense surveillance activity, King's Cross in London. King's Cross has been the subject of much controversy regarding its unsolicited use of facial recognition technology in the public realm. Through public recognition and backlash of these surveillance technologies, however, the practice is currently under review. This investigation occupies multiple scales, the sight, the body, the face, and the pixel. Reading surveillance through each scale enables an understanding of its practice as extremely pervasive and deeply entrenched, acting across all bodies, both physical and digital, close and distant. The project begins with a walk through the site. By highlighting instances of surveillance devices appearing on video and by recording the timestamp and duration of each exposure, surveillance coverage can be mapped. Within a four minute walk through, 23 individual CCTV cameras are identified with levels of intense exposure and levels of limited coverage. Through a reconstruction of this walkthrough, including the CCTV cameras not visible in the video, we can see that there are in fact 31 individual cameras with a direct line of sight to the route. Each camera is fixed to private buildings but faces the public realm. Therefore, whilst it is at least one camera with visibility of the individual, there's only complete coverage when information is shared between the adjacent buildings. In mapping this visibility, the conditions of surveillance in the site can be read through its levels of exposure. By representing the visibility of site surveillance in this way, the technologies can be understood as a network of systems that rely upon the whole system for utmost coverage. When introducing additional routes of circulation, we can understand the site through the diagram of its surveillance coverage, with varying levels of intensity across the network. In order to interrogate the surveillance strategies in King's Cross, the project then undertakes a process of digital reconstruction that catalogues all visible instances of surveillance technology on the site. This process begins with a photographic documentation of the site, which becomes a reference for remote reconstruction of the built environment and correct camera placement.
Through this reconstruction, we're able to inhabit the surveillance networks and begin to understand the true scope of its coverage, entering the viewport of the camera and acting as its operator. This network surveillance has almost complete coverage over the public realm. In moving to the scale of the body, facial recognition technology identifies the presence of a human figure within its field of view, giving the camera an object to focus on. In identifying a subject, these movable dome cameras can pan 360 degrees around the site and have a seemingly infinite field of view. Thus, they can easily track the individual as they move across the site, entirely negating any potential blind spots. At the scale of the face, remote surveillance shifts to a more embodied mode of vision. Footage is cropped to the area of identification, and as such, we lose the context of the observation. As seen in the site-wide reconstruction of the route, each view is taken from a camera fixed to one of the private buildings on the site. As such, it's only possible to build a contextual route of the targeted individual when these separate buildings cooperate with each other fully. Without all institutions sharing their public realm surveillance, complete coverage cannot be achieved. At the scale of the pixel, we can understand the process of abstraction and reconstruction that the algorithm uses to construct the individual's face. The structure of each face is created through identifying key facial markers and mapping their relationship to one another, distilling the face to a constellation of points and connections. The image of the face is then divided into zones of contrast and all other information is removed, leaving only the diagnostic fragments of discerning features, an algorithmic collage. Learning from the work of artists such as Adam Harvey and Zach Blass, many low-tech solutions for resistance emerge. These are interventions into the algorithm itself, centered around distorting the zones of contrast in the face to introduce errors in the algorithm's facial structure model. This is a process of countershading, an inversion of the face that's still recognizable as a likeness for humans, but foreign to the algorithm. Facial recognition technology relies upon creating a facial structure of the individual, by intervening to disrupt this facial structure and introduce errors, the algorithm cannot compare the facial structure to its dataset. By selectively painting the face to create unusual tones and areas of contrast, the key facial markers are obscured and render the face harder to detect. By disrupting the natural symmetry of the face, it becomes more difficult for the algorithm to construct an accurate model. By concealing parts of the bridge of the nose, the relationship between the eyes and nose is disrupted and the face becomes difficult to reconstruct. When these instances of false recognition are assembled together, we can read the face as a strategy of rebellion. These low-tech solutions offer the means for individuals to regain ownership over their own likeness. The subversion of facial recognition systems can offer the most powerful means of protest against this implementation, as by rendering it inaccurate through facial camouflage, its use becomes redundant. It is only through this collective model of resistance that we can hope to intervene with network surveillance, such as in King's Cross.